Hey y'all, this is Frugal Panda here. You got your bachelor's in psychology, criminal justice, uh, human services, sociology, any of the human services related fields. You just graduated, what do you do now? This is a tough one for a lot of people. Um, me, I didn't have that much of an issue because I was already working in like hospital settings as like psych techs and stuff like that before I even graduated. I already had what, five years, five or six years under my belt while I slowly went to school. And the reason it took me so long to graduate with my bachelor's back then is ultimately I was already at the financial point in my life. I was in the military before, so they were paying for school, but I was at the financial point that finishing it really wasn't that big of a deal. Um, quickly, I mean, because it wasn't really going to impact my life. It was going to open doors for me to other jobs caseworker, because caseworkers and stuff, you need your bachelor's. Um, um, county jobs, such as social caseworkers, that get mixed up with social workers. Social caseworkers are not social workers, per se, but they're, they get paid as much, a lot, actually many times, maybe all the counties pay more than what an average social worker would make starting out. Um, so, but it, with county benefits, which are government benefits. Now, with that being said, you just got you just got your degree. You're trying to figure out if you're coming close to graduating. Easiest job for you to get is going to be direct care, but direct care you got to ask yourself with them. You're going to be doing a lot of things. You're going to do you're going to do real world crisis management and counseling like right there on the floor. They are direct care, so residentials are in hospitals. You're you're not only trying to deal with clients, uh, adults or kids that are in crisis. You know, but you also may have to restrain them on top of it if you cannot get them calm down, calm down, and they're a danger to themselves or others. You know, stuff like that. Um, you're also going to help with meals. You're going to put towels out. You're going to maybe help empty the trash on the unit during the, your shift. Uh, you may even do some cleaning. You'll do things like that. A lot of menial tasks you will do. Um, but as far as crisis management, you will get really good at that. That's real world. That's not, you know, going to someone's office or a social worker coming out every blue moon to potentially help you. You deal with those crises all the time. Um, so you will get you will get that experience in that. And some people are cut out for it and some people are not. Some people look down on our job. It's kind of weird. Some people look down on our jobs that are in the field of helping others versus people that are outside of the field. A lot of times will look up to us, um, what we do. And I say us because my other job, one of my current jobs where I work part time, I always keep two jobs. I have usually I'm, I've been doing this 20 years. Excuse me. Let me get back to that real quick. So I've been in the field 20 years. I have a bachelor's in psych and uh, business and I have a master's in business, master's in business administration, MBA, and I have a master's in human services counseling. Um, but with those, so I've been doing I've done a lot of jobs, just to put it that way, uh, in 20 years. So, but the, some people will look up to you that aren't in the field, and then some people will look down on you. I, I've 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 felt it before uh, with people. The difference is, is I've been doing this twenty years, and you're not going to do that to me. You're not going to try and look down on me, because it's like just an example. Say a social worker tried, to, you know, says to me, "Oh, you know, I've heard this before. They find I have a master's degree. Why aren't you working as a social worker? Or, or why you, why didn't you get your license? Why are you not doing this?" I, and I look at them and I'm like, um, because I make more than you do. And I've told a couple of them that. And I, ah, yes, I make more than you. They actually pay me more than I would make being a salary social worker and going and spending two years of my life working for someone for free um, with a mortgage. <laughs> you, you know, um, you're more than likely trying to get to where I'm at. I know that degree, I've been there, done that. I got all that. I'm not really concerned about that. It's about ultimately, for me, at this point in my life, it's about what that job does for me in regards to flexibility, to live a life, to go on vacation, to take time off when I want to take off, and just enjoy life because life is too short. Anyway, let's get back to it. So you got to be cut out for inpatient units and residentials. And some people find out right away and they jump right into school afterwards. I'm getting my master's. I can't do this. But do you need it? 
one thing I start doing is applying to the counties, caseworker. I would still, I hate to say this guys, because some people, I know this is your calling and some people, it may be your calling. You may do very well at this. Uh, Child Protective Services is a burnout. They're going to pay you just in Denver alone. They pay around $60,000 a year with your bachelor's degree to go work for Denver County, Arapahoe County, any of the counties. They all pay around the same, about 60 grand close to it. Uh, that is really good money coming out of school with a bachelor's in psychology, but it's a burnout field. Um, it, it can, if you're not prepared for it and you don't know how to properly take care of your own mental health, it can leave you burnt out, um, difficulty having relationships, hating the field, and having your own just mental health issues. So it's just something to be aware of. And if you're going to do that, make a plan of action on how you're going to do it. Make an escape plan if you realize it's not what you want to do. But will they pay you? Oh, yeah, you're making more than a LPC or social worker makes at most most uh, places outside of a hospital, um, which they make around that a lot of times. Um, let's see. Nursing. Nursing's a big one for people. Here's the thing about nursing. You can go and do one of those one-year programs because you already got your bachelor's and spend about forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 and not work for a year or barely work for an agency or whatever and have your RN. You'll come out of school making sixty grand. Actually, you probably because you're going to get the crappy shifts usually starting out. You're going to probably end up being on night shift. But being on night shift means you make more money. So your first year, you might make seventy to $80,000 your first year, but only required to work three days a week because most nurses and most modern hospitals only work three twelves. Anything extra they work after that is straight overtime. But nurses can also work as case workers. Kaiser, um, Blue Cross Blue Shield, they hire a lot of those nurses work from home. As a nurse, reciprocity all across this country. So if you, I live in Denver, wherever you live, and you're like, you know what, I think I want to move to Denver. You're an RN. You get online or you call Dora, Department of Regulatory Affairs. Hey, I want to see about getting a license there. Oh, just fill this out, send this in, pay this amount, and you get your license in the mail. You're Colorado. You have licensure for Colorado, too. Guess what you do? You don't even step foot in the, in the, in the state. You start researching, looking at jobs. You start applying. You get three calls. Someone hires you through a Zoom meeting. You have a job before you even come into the um, state. Nursing's one to look at too. It's a BSN is what you need. I can tell you about nursing. Uh, my spouse is a psychiatric nurse too. Um, if you're single, you're young, you're older, and you want to have a better life, and you can do a proper work-life balance, it will change your life. It will change your life. You can go from a new nurse making, you know, you know, Sixty to eighty thousand dollars a year your first year versus being a social worker making forty five thousand at most nonprofits. If you're lucky, you get into a hospital and they're gonna pay you more. But they also might they also might burn you out quicker too. And you're also a lot of times one of the first to get cut when they need to make cuts because you're non essential staff. So that's something to keep in mind. And I'm not telling you not to do it. It's just things to keep in mind. But as a nurse, you literally can make a plan in four to five years to buy yourself a house to buy yourself a condo, to even travel overseas to New Zealand, Australia, and work as a nurse even there. There's a lot of things you can do and make good money or wherever. Um, you can work for traveling nurses. Uh, I worked with a gentleman I worked at the jail and he was a traveling nurse. He stayed six weeks. He came out here to check out Denver for six weeks. Uh, his contract ended after six weeks. They paid for his rent and everything like that. He stuck around like a week or two just to do more traveling. He's now in Anchorage, Alaska for six weeks. He's just traveling around, checking out and deciding where he wants to settle or if he doesn't want to settle, you know, type of thing. He doesn't make as much as a regular nurse, but he's still pulling in $25 to $30 an hour while they're paying everything else, expenses and all that stuff. Okay, so casework. We talked about casework. The best places to get in for casework are counties because counties a lot of times... Uh, will pay you more. Nonprofits are the easiest to get in with your bachelor's and maybe a place you have to go to get experience, but they do not pay anything. Their pay is horrendous. And I, I'm being honest with you. I worked I worked at one two years ago. I've worked at them before. Usually I pick them up as just side jobs. 
They always try and get me from full-time job for full-time, and I don't have the heart to tell them, dude, y'all don't pay enough for me to work here full-time, and not for, especially for the stress you're gonna try and put me under. And they do try and put you under stress in those little nonprofits because they never have enough people. People quit on the dime. I mean, quit just like that all the time because the pay's so low. The one I worked for, I worked there as a caseworker um, two days a week. Was it two? Yeah. Two or three days a week. The pay was $15 and 15 something an hour. I make more than double that in my hospital job. And I'm benefited and I'm only part time. So one of my shifts at the hospital is more than I make there almost in, a, in those three days I work there at, at the casework job. The problem is, is I get in there and those people are struggling. They trying to get, a, get you know, try, most of them were struggling, trying to, you know, just function in Denver on $15. They're making less than people at Amazon make. All you need is a high school diploma and dealing with way more stress than just, you know, like doing stocking and picking orders and stuff like that. You're dealing with human stresses, driving to get people, driving to check on people. Oh, you got an appointment and it's at the end of the day. So you get off at five, you're just now leaving the, the uh, the client's house, now you gotta go sit in traffic for an hour and a half. And you gotta do it all again tomorrow. He has to say, I dumped a job because they, and also they lied too. They didn't tell me all the things it entailed and they should have known better. I've been in the business 20 years. Do you really think I'm gonna tolerate doing that? And that's what they hope. They hope they finally get people that do that. And they will get some people. So I would recommend the counties, Nonprofits, if you have to, but try and make a flexible schedule so it's not eating you up. If it's part time and it's a crappy casework job, it's only part time. You know what I mean? You look at it and you're like, oh, I got, I just got to make it till Wednesday, and I'm done for the week. You can do that. You can do that and just get it so you can have it on your resume, and then other better jobs will come along. Um, with your bachelor's in psych, like I said, you healthcare. You can look at all types of healthcare jobs, but my main thing is is research. Research. Don't just listen to someone that works in the field that wants to play it up. Uh, that happens in social worker, social work and counseling. They want to, oh, it's this and that. It's this and that. I've been doing it 20 years, yada, yada, yada. But then ask them, where do you live? Oh, I got an apartment over here. You are 50 years old and you don't own anything. And it's not by choice. Because trust me, I haven't always owned stuff. I would rent things just to travel around. But you've been in Denver all this time and you can't buy anything. You know, your credit is weak, you know, types of thing versus, you know, other fields where you might come out of school with instant credit or just come out of school and realize, oh, my God, I can make ten to fifteen thousand dollars this month and pay off half my student loans. So it's just things to think about and research. Take your time. Don't stress. Just get you a job. And if the job seems really difficult or it seems like it may not, it doesn't hurt before you quit to ask, hey, I need to go part-time. You can tell them anything. I'm going back to school and I really need to drop down to part-time. That may help you be able to tolerate it so it can go on your resume. You get that six months to a year experience that'll bring you better things uh, later on down the road. Um, it's a pretty good field. And I'll, I'll talk about that next and what I think is good about it and explain to you why I think it's good. But remember that direct care is fairly easy. If you can, try and get a direct care position in a hospital versus a residential. Residentials are nonprofits or either for-profits. They don't care about you. Hospitals are big enough that they're gonna offer you good benefits. There's always gonna be opportunities to do other things and to learn about other disciplines. And you may find out you don't wanna do human services in the future. You may find out you wanna be a respiratory therapist and they'll give you money to help pay for it. You want to be around people that expose you to the most disciplines so you can make uh, a decision on what you may want to do down, down the line on in regards to if you want to become a social worker or a counselor, or do you want to become a respiratory therapy, therapist, or hey, what's this occupational therapy about? You know, things like that. The more exposure you have, the better decision, better, um, the better choices you'll have in regards to what decisions you're going to make about where you want to take your future path. Or maybe you don't want to go back to school. Maybe this is it. And that's all right, too. We'll talk about that, too.